Church. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm hoping you had a great day today. I'm hoping you played outside, maybe rode your bike, played on a swing set, but now you're with us, and that's what matters. You're with Kids Church. We've missed you so much. Well, tonight's lesson is a great lesson. It's about faith, and I've got a PowerPoint for you, so ready? Try to get it in your mind. Faith is acting on what God says. Now you say it. Faith is acting on what God says. Faith, believing in Jesus, trusting in him, and that's what tonight's lesson is going to be all about. So stay tuned. I hope you're going to have an awesome time. Well, it's time for the pledges. So I want you to get ready, get to your place, stand up, put your hand over your heart, and we're going to do the American flag first. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, now we're going to do the, the Christian flag. So hands over your heart still. Ready? Go. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. All right, one more time. We're going to do the PowerPoint. Ready? Faith is acting on what God says. Faith, believing and trusting in him. So it's time to start Kids Church. What better way? Let's just pray to Jesus. Ready? Jesus, I'm so thankful for tonight. I'm so thankful that all these boys and girls are watching, and I pray that you touch their hearts. I pray you help them to. I pray that you help them to listen and 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 have faith on what you say, Jesus. Be with us tonight in Jesus' name, Amen. Boys and girls, I can't introduce myself, but it's praise time. So um, I'm going to stay up here for praise, and I'm going to have. Rebecca, Sister Rebecca, and Sister Olivia to come, and we are going to praise the Lord with you in your house tonight. Ready? All right, now, let me introduce this first song, though. I told you tonight it's about faith. This is a new song about faith, F-A-I-T-H. I'm going to help, it's going to help you spell it tonight. So F-A-I-T-H, and we're just going to F. A-I-T-H. You're going to love it. It's going to talk about a mountain. And remember, every time they talk about mountains, it's about things that are big in your life, worries, troubles, problems. But you know what? Have faith in Jesus. That's all I got to say. Have faith in Jesus. So here we go. Hit it, Sister Shayla. <laughs> you love him tonight? I'm so thankful that he is with us. All right, our next song. Oh, yeah. 
da, 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 da. It, oh, I should have known this. This is amazing grace, his amazing grace, his amazing love. Because of that, we can have faith in him. So now this next song, um, it's a little bit, we, we've sang it many times before. I know that. But I kind of got a different version, and it's a little bit faster. So be ready, because I know there's a lot of motions. And I want you to notice the scenery. It is beautiful, all the stars in the sky. So enjoy this song, and let's just praise them together. Hit it, Sister Shayla.
didn't you love that beautiful scenery on there? All God's creation. Have faith in him tonight. Speaking of faith, we're going to talk about, I mean, we're going to sing the song One Way. And it talks about faith in here. So whatever comes your way, whatever you go through, have faith in Jesus. Trust in him and believe in him. All right, here we go. Last song, One Way. Hit it, Sister Shayla. Thank you that we could have faith in you. Boys and girls, thanks for singing with us, praising with us. Now it's time for Scripture Memory Verse. Thank you, praise team. That was an awesome job again. And tonight's Scripture Memory Verse is super, super exciting. And you'll want to hear this one tonight. And you'll want to learn it. Because this is found in Mark chapter 9, verses 23. It says, anything is possible for someone who has faith. Anything. Didn't say something, didn't say a couple of things. It says anything is possible for someone who has faith. Mark 9 23.
Now, you guys probably have this memorized already, but let's say it one more time for emphasis because I want you guys to realize we're talking about faith tonight. You know, you'll probably hear this a little bit later, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's important that you get this scripture memory verse in your head so that you'll know that I want to be a person of faith. Let's say it again. Anything is possible to, for someone who has faith Mark 9, verse 23. And you say, Brother Kurt, you know, what does it take to have faith? How can I become a person of faith? Well, one way to have faith is to read God's word. If you want to have faith in God, begin to read what he says about faith. As you begin to read what he says about faith, you're going to trust him and know him more. And as you trust him and you know him, you'll begin to act on what he has said in his word. Just like our PowerPoint said earlier, faith will help you to act on certain things. When you have faith in God and you know him and you trust him, you know he's not going to do anything bad to hurt you. So when he says to do something, you know that you're going to, you'll say, I just believe, I have faith, I can trust you, God. I know that you, you have my, your plans are perfect for my life. So let's say this scripture memory verse one more time. Because as we go on with this lesson on faith, I want this word of God to stick in your mind and stick in your heart. I want you to realize how important it is to have faith. Let's say it one more time together. Anything is possible for someone who has faith. Mark 9, verse 23. I know you've heard it so much tonight, but you need faith in your life and you need to trust God in order to live your life to the fullest and when you put your faith and your trust in God you will ha have eternal life with him in heaven now please worship with me as we sing this song
thank you, God, for your love and your goodness, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being our king and the person that we can turn to and trust in you, God. Lord, please help these kids know if we put a little bit of faith in you, that you will do wonders in our life. Please protect these children as they go about their lives, Lord. And please bless them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, Kids Church kids. Sister Taryn here today with the Bible lesson this time. And I have a question for you. Who is, think about, the oldest person you know? Hmm. Who's the oldest person you know personally? Maybe it's somebody that's in their 70s, maybe in their 80s. Maybe you've even met somebody in their 90s or 100s. Those are some elderly people. That's a more respectful term than an old person. But today we are talking about being faithful. And you can't talk about faith without talking about Abraham. And so our Bible lesson today is the story of Abraham. And now when this story begins, Abraham, his name at this point is Abram, and his wife Sarai are very, very old. Abram is 99 years old, right almost to 100. And Sarai is 90 years old. And it was at this time that the Lord appeared to Abram and gave him a promise. He said that he was going to make him a fa the father of many nations, that he was going to have many, many descendants, and he was going to make a great nation out of him if Abraham would follow him. And so you can find this story in Genesis 17. So I'm going to read just that one little portion. It says, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of many nations. No longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. So I have some props here to kind of help us remember about these name changes that they've got going on. So the first one is Abram, and his name was changed to Abraham, which means father of many nations or father of many. And so for that, I have here, this is a set of photo albums. That's a little outdated, but generally um, you'll get a bunch of pr pictures printed off as you kind of grow up and um, your parents will get pictures printed off and put them in a photo album and it kind of chronicles your growing up um, and you should probably have photo albums of people, um, I know my parents do, of people that are older than me, some people I've never even met before. So it's kind of um, a, a chronicle of your entire family. And so this reminds us that God told Abram that he was going to change his name to Abraham, make him a father of many, that he was going to have a great big family. So here's our family album here. And then when he told Abram this, Abram fell down on his face um, because he, and worshipped God. He was saying, whatever covenant it is that you have for me, I will follow you. And then God said, not only that, but I have a promise for your wife, Sarai. She is going to have a son, and I'm going to make her the mother of many nations, that many kings will come from her. And so here is my princess. She has a little tiara here. This is Princess Ariel, but you got it. You get the idea. So God said that he was going to change her name to Sarah, which means princess, that she was going to be the mother of um, many people, many nations, and that from those nations, there would be kings that would come from her. And what's most amazing about these promises here that God is making Abraham now and Sarah is that Abraham and Sarah did not have any children together at this point. Abraham did not have any children from Sarah. And um, so when God is promising all these things to them, they're really old. I know it's not super respectful to say generally anymore, but they're really old. Okay, they're 90 and 99. Like generally people in their 90s aren't having babies, right? And so when God told this to Abraham, Abraham again fell down on his face. But this time he was laughing because he said, how is this going to happen that uh, a woman this old is going to have a baby? He just didn't think it was possible. That seems completely impossible. But Abraham wasn't really remembering here that he, he, who he was talking to. He was talking to God, and nothing is impossible with God. And so, a, so God said, Sarah will have a baby um, next year, and you're going to have a son, and you're going to call him Isaac. 
Now, I wonder if you guys maybe have heard what Isaac means, but this little guy is going to represent that for us. Isaac means laughter because um, Abraham laughed. So he's kind of my little silly face here to remind us of laughter. But so God made some pretty incredible promises to Abraham and to Sarah that they were going to have children that late in life and that they would have many, many descendants. So their children would have more children. Those children would have more children. They were going to be kind of the beginning of a great nation. And um, even though that seems pretty incredible, um, God met all of those promises, just like he changed their name from Abram to Abraham, father of many, great big family, from Sarai to Sarah, that she was going to be the princess and have kings that were going to come out of her lineage. And they did. And it all started with Isaac, their promised child, which meant laughter. So God made these incredible promises to them and they followed God. You know, they did their best to be faithful. And that's what we're learning about today. And so God makes great promises to us too, if we will be faithful and do our best to follow after God. He makes us incredible promises as well. So even though sometimes it may seem like they're impossible things, um, God keeps his promises every time. He always keeps his promises. So stay faithful. Bloop. All right. Hi, boys and girls. It's Jesse again, your favorite male guy, one age 27 person. I don't know. I'm never good at these introductions. It's, it's different being in front of the cameras. I'm going to be honest. I get a reaction out of the crowd, and that's how I work. But enough about me. Let's talk about Jesus. All right. So um, I need you to visualize something. For your object lesson today, your object is going to be your house. So raise your hand if you have a house. It's okay if you don't. I, I'm pretty sure everybody has a house. At least a house you live in. Maybe you don't own it. Maybe your parents do. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. All right. Now, in that house, whether it be red, blue, with one door, two doors, tall, small, little, big, Dr. Seuss house, um, that house has food, right? Where's your food? A refrigerator. That house has somewhere for you to rest, right? Where do you rest? Maybe in the couch, maybe in your bed. For some of you, maybe on the floor, I don't know. Anyways, um, so we're gonna talk about that. Now, how have any of you ever been locked out of your house? And maybe you younger kids probably don't realize it. Maybe, I don't know, mom, mom left the keys inside, but um, I'm gonna be honest, I have been locked out of my house. It's not fun. I still have a house but I can't get in it, right? So what, what point is a house if you can't get in it, right? Um, so the Bible is just like that. It's nice to have a Bible, just like it's nice to have a house. But if you can't get in your house, where are you going to sleep, right? Where are you going to eat? Where are you going to play your video games and play your dolls and whatever like that? And more importantly, where are you going to go when the sky gets a little dark and you start to hear that rumble. Rum, 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 rum. That sounds like a motorcycle. I'm bad at that too. Anyways, thunder sounds. Boom. What do you do? You run inside, right? Because you're like, there's lightning coming. I got to get inside. I got I to gotta get safe. It's not safe to be outside. So when our lives start hearing rumble, what do we need to do? We need to start opening our Bible. We need to go to God for protection. It's kind of hard to open up a Bible with one hand. We need to open up a Bible. And not only is a Bible good for protection, a Bible will give you food. A Bible will give you comfort. A Bible will give you all the things you need, but you have to open it, just like you have to get inside your house. So, anyways, that's enough for me. I will see you guys next time. All right, so once you know what the promises are that are in this precious book, then you know that you can trust in God and believe in him. And how do you believe in God? You just have to believe. And so you have to know what the promises are so that you can believe in what the promises are. So it's kind of like this. I'm going to have a friend come on up here and help me. Come on up, Sister Zipporah. She's going to help me. So Sister Zipporah, she's my friend, and she knows that she can trust me. 
She knows that I care about her and that I want what's best for her. So she doesn't have to be afraid if I ask her to do something or if I suggest something to, to her. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to tell her something that's not true. I'm going to tell her the truth because she's my friend and I care about her. So, Sister Zippor, you look a little worn out. Why don't, why don't you take a seat in this chair now? This chair, it's safe. You can sit. Yeah, yeah. How does that feel? Good. She says it feels pretty good. Now, she didn't have to be afraid to sit in that chair. She didn't have to be afraid that it was going to collapse on her or that I was going to scooch it out of the way because I care about her and I'm her friend. And that's kind of like this word that we've got right here. In it are some promises that we can trust in. And these promises will never fail. And we know that to be so because God's promises always come true. God never fails on a promise. So when God says in his word, don't be afraid, you may feel some fear in your heart and you may even wonder, oh Lord, I just don't know how this is going to work out. And you may feel a little fear, but what you do when you feel that, then is you go to the word and you say, Lord, I feel fear. Can you help me with this, Lord? And God will help you with it. And he'll help to take that fear out of your heart. When he says, um, I am with you always, then you know you can trust that. That's a promise that's in his word. When he says, I am with you always, that means he's not going to turn away when you need him the most. His word is always going to be faithful and true. And our um, PowerPoint, let me just turn it over. Our PowerPoint says, I always forget exactly. Faith is acting on what God says. And I think kind of the key word there is acting. Acting on what God says. Not just saying it, but believing it in your heart and acting on it. And allowing God to work in your life and allowing God to um, perform miracles through that faith. You know, when you allow your faith to grow in your heart, that allows God to do wonderful and powerful things. We tie the hands of God when we don't have faith in him. So we want to teach you, teach you as children how to have faith. And if you ever want to know, like Brother Kurt said, you, you take this word, you open it up, and you look in it, and you read it, and you ask God to show you. Show me the way, Lord. Help me to find the way that you would have me to go. Show me what you would have me to do. And I promise you, because just as much as I love Sister Zippor, and I would never lead her astray, how much more does God love me? He's never going to lead me astray. He'll never lead you astray. He's always going to be there for you. And you may not always understand the way. Sometimes, like Brother Jesse said, you know, you have a, a storm that comes, and, and you don't know what's going to happen in a storm, do you? No one knows what's going to happen in a bad storm. If a tornado will come, or winds will come, or, or water will come, we don't know. But we do know, so in, now that's in the physical life, but in your spiritual life when a storm comes and it's bad like that and you just don't know. I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't know exactly how this is going to work, um, but I'm going to put my faith in you, Lord. And I'm going to trust in you. Even when I don't know and I can't see the way, perhaps the rain is clouding my view or perhaps the clouds or the dark is making me afraid. So I pull open your word. I place my hand in yours and I just allow you to lead me and let those promises come to fruition in your life because they will. God never fails. God does not lie. His word will always come true. We're going to pray together. Thank you, Sister Zippor. I appreciate it. We're going to pray together and ask the Lord to just um, solidify this word in your heart and in your mind and allow you to grow in faith. You know, this is the second time that I've taught specifically about faith, and I believe that God really wants for us to understand that that concept and to know that it's true. So we're going to pray that God will help us to understand faith and to know that it's true with everything that is in it, to know that this word is true, the promises in it are true, and you don't have to be afraid, but you can trust in the Lord. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I'm so thankful for the power of your word. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you never lie, that your promises will always come true. Lord, I may not always see the way that you 
you will take, but I know that I can trust you. I know that I can act on that faith that you have placed in my heart and that when I do that, that my faith will begin to grow. And Lord, you'll be able to do even greater and greater things. And I believe in these last days, Lord, that there will be times of great faith. And Lord, it's going to come in the lives and the minds of the, uh, in the hearts of the children and the young people of this generation. I believe, God, that through faith, great things will happen, God. And I know, Jesus, that you are in control. And Lord, we just place these children, we place this word in their hearts, and we just ask, Lord, that you would cause it to come to fruition, Jesus, and let there be an, a great abundance of faith that grow in their minds and hearts. In the name of Jesus, I know you can, and I trust in you, Lord. And when we allow it, you can do great things. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I worship you, Lord. Amen.